Hi, this is Mary from the Daily Sew, and this is Atlas, and this is the bed I just made Atlas that is, he is refusing to get on right now. So in this video, we are going to make this dog bed, and I'm going to show you how. So if you're ready, let's go. For this project, you're going to need a piece of foam. This is three inches thick. You could also stack two pieces of foam to make the thickness that you want. Cut it to the same size you want the bed to be. You need fabric, a cotton canvas or denim, something sturdy that can be washed. You could use a water resistant fabric for the bottom if it's gonna be for outside. And you could of course use fleece for the top or even the entire bed. Wash and dry the fabric before cutting so that you can wash and dry the cover when necessary. You're gonna go ahead and get all the shrinkage out before you cut it and sew it. You're gonna need a zipper as long as the long side of the bed or longer. Look for a non-separating or all-purpose zipper. At this length, they're sometimes called upholstery zippers. If all you can find is a jacket zipper, also known as a separating zipper, that's okay. It just might cost a little more, but it'll still work. Just be sure that the zipper does not have hard plastic or metal teeth unless it's the exact size you need because you can't sew over those teeth if the zipper is too long. If you're adding piping to the edge or to both edges, you're gonna need fabric for that and some cord. Quarter inch thick cord is a good size for your dog bed. You need enough to go around the edge that you wanna add it to. If it's two edges, you need enough for two edges. And of course, you'll need your usual suspects of scissors, this time a big ruler, and something to mark the fabric with. Here are some approximate sizes for beds. Of course, you can make the dog bed any size you want. These are just some general sizes. And this yardage that I'm suggesting is for solid fabric or fabric that doesn't have any direction to it. Okay, here's your cut list. Let's start with the top and bottom piece. They will be cut to the size you want your dog bed plus one inch in each direction. This allows for a half inch seam allowance. So if you want a 20 inch by 30 inch dog bed, you're gonna cut it to be 21 inches by 31 inches. Each side of the foam also needs a piece of fabric to cover it. You'll have the front and the two side pieces and they will be as long as the side they cover by the height of your foam plus one inch, again, to allow for that half inch seam allowance on each side. The back piece is trickier because the zipper goes down the length of it. It's still as long as the side it covers, but since we have an extra seam where the zipper attaches, we need extra seam allowance. You're gonna make this piece as long as you need, plus one inch for seam allowance, and as high as you need, plus two inches for seam allowance. So if it's 30 by four, you're gonna cut 31 inches by six inches. You add two inches to the height instead of one. After you cut this back side, you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise, make a crease either with the iron or with your fingers, and then cut on that crease to make two narrow, long back pieces. There's no need to make paper patterns. You can just measure and mark directly onto your fabric and cut it out. Okay, now is the time to make the piping if you're doing it. Piping is basically a cord covered in a fabric and then sewn into the seam. It isn't a tube of fabric covering the cord, but it has a flange, so to speak, so that it can be anchored into the seam. How wide you cut the fabric strips that cover the cord will depend on the width of your cord because it has to go all the way around, right? So for quarter inch cord, I need to cut the fabric into one and a half inch wide strips. And I need enough fabric to go around all four sides of my dog bed. So you're gonna cut your cord to your desired length. In my case, that's 100 inches, plus one or two inches for some overlap. Then cut enough fabric that's gonna cover the cord to equal that length plus about six inches. So my fabric is about 54 inches wide and I need 100 inches of piping. So I'm gonna cut two strips of 54 inches to make one long strip. And I'm not gonna have 108 inches. It's not 54 plus 
54 because you're going to lose some of that length where you connect the two strips. So you take the two strips and you lay the ends at 90 degree angles to each other. Then you sew across the two pieces at a 45 degree angle. This way, when they are sewn, it makes one long strip. And you're going to trim the seam allowance there. If you sewed it straight across like you would think or you normally would, you're going to have a lot of seam allowance to sew over when you're putting that piping into the seam. So that is why we sewed at a 45 degree angle. It spreads out the seam allowance. So here is where the corner is underneath on the bottom strip and I'm going to sew it from the top corner to the opposite bottom corner. This is my sewing line. Do this every time you need to add a new strip and make sure your strips aren't twisted before you sew them down because that does happen. After sewing the strips together, trim the seam allowance and press or finger press the seams open. Start at one end and lay your cord down in the center of the strip away from the edge, the short edge, about an inch. And you're going to start sewing not at the beginning of the cord but about an inch down from the end. You need some of the fabric loose and you need some of the cord loose as well. Here where the pin is, I'll start sewing. So you want to sew right up against the cord and in order to do that, you're going to need a zipper foot. You're just sandwiching that cord right in the fabric nice and tight. So all the way down and when you get to the end of the cord, stop a couple of inches short and don't back tack. Don't trim the fabric yet either. So in a traditional piping finish, one end is going to overlap the other and you need all that fabric loose and the cords loose so that you can line them up perfectly. But in this project, we're going to do a little cheat that you wouldn't necessarily do on a chair or other furniture, but it's okay for a dog bed. So sew your fabric up close to the cord and then we will attach it to the bed. Okay, the piping is made and it's going to be attached to the top piece. It's going to be sewn onto the right side of the top piece, and I'm going to start in the corner. Line up the raw edge of the piping to the raw edge of the bed. The piping cord should be laying about a half inch in from the edge because that's the seam allowance. Pin it in a few places to start, but really you can guide the piping while you sew it down. Sew the piping down along the edge, again with the zipper foot, and when you get to the corner, you're going to stop sewing one half inch in before the end of the bed. This is where your seam allowance is, remember, so don't sew into the seam allowance. Sew to the corner, the half inch, stop. Say that this pin is my stitching. I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave the needle down in the fabric, raise the presser foot, clip at a diagonal the piping seam allowance and that lets the piping turn the corner. You need to clip both layers but don't clip the stitches that hold the cord in. Then you're going to pivot the fabric under the needle, the fabric and the piping cord, lower the presser foot again and sew to the next corner. You're going to do this at every corner until you meet up with the beginning. Leave a little bit of the piping unsewn at the start and at the end and then we will finish them. So the piping is attached along all the sides of the top piece. And let's take a closer look at this corner. Here are the two ends. I've stopped a little before each end. I've got some extra fabric and some extra cord and I want to reduce any excess bulk before I sew it down. So trim just a little at a time and play with the placement until you get the ends where you want. They have to go into the seam allowance to be finished in this way. So they're going to tuck back into the seam allowance, but you also want them to kind of meet on the outside. You don't want a big gap there. Then go back to the sewing machine and sew the rest of the piping down and over the two cords exiting into the seam allowance. It's bulky here, so take your time sewing over this. After sewing the ends down, just trim off any excess. So my top piece has the piping attached and if I was putting piping on the bottom edge, I would attach it to the bottom now in the same way. I'm going to put my top and bottom aside and let's sew the sides. 
I've got the two short sides, one long side that will go across the front, and then I've got the two narrower but long strips that are going to make the back where the zipper goes. Now, my zipper is too long, but that's okay. I can trim off any extra. Better to be too long than not long enough. Let's put in this zipper. The zipper is going to go between the two back pieces like this. Have the two back pieces right side up. Lay the zipper face down on the top piece so that one long edge is aligned with the bottom edge of the top piece and the rest of the zipper is on the top of the fabric. It's not in the space between the two pieces. Line up the short end of the zipper so the zipper stop is not on the seam line. Remember, that's a half inch in from the edge of the fabric. That's the seam line. It can be right next to the seam line or it can be a little ways past it but you don't want to sew over that metal zipper stop when you attach the side to this piece. You can even have the stop beyond the fabric, but I like to have mine next to the seam line. Line up the edge of the tape with the opening of the top back strip. It seems like we should be sewing it so that the teeth are in between the two back pieces, but we don't, and it will get there. It's just not how we sew it. Sew the zipper down on the zipper tape with the zipper foot close to the teeth, but not too close. I like to do it about halfway, kind of in the middle of that zipper tape. When you start to sew and you come close to the zipper pull, you'll need to move the pull down out of your way, and then you keep sewing. And when you come to the pull again, you can move it back up where the zipper is already sewn down. You'll have to lift the presser foot in order to move the pull past the needle, but then you put the presser foot back down and keep sewing. When you get to the end of the fabric, take a couple of uh, back stitches and don't trim that zipper yet if it's hanging off. So the zipper is sewn to the top back piece. As you can see, when I flip it up, it's where I want it to be. Now we need to attach the zipper to the bottom back piece. I like to lay the pieces out in order to see how they will go together. That just helps me think. Okay, with my zipper facing me, facing up, I'm going to flip my other piece of the back down on top of the zipper so that the raw edge there is aligned with the zipper tape. Then I'm going to make sure the short ends of the, both the fabric and the zipper tapes are also lined up with each other so that I'm lining up my zipper. And then again with the zipper foot still on your machine, you're going to sew this zipper tape to the bottom piece here, the last piece. After the zipper is sewn in, Take an iron and give the fabric next to the zipper teeth a nice good press to set a crisp fold. Then you're going to sew this down, this fold down, about a quarter inch away from the zipper teeth on either side of the zipper teeth or both sides of the zipper teeth. And again, you're going to move the pull out of your way as you sew. You don't want to sew too close to the teeth because the zipper needs to, be able, needs to have room to slide up and down. So sew down one side and then sew down the other side, about a quarter inch away from the teeth. This gives the zipper a cleaner look and it reinforces it with those extra lines of stitching. So here's the zipper finished and you can see the extra rows of stitching and the pull is able to move freely, no problem. So let's make the sides. Remember, this is the back, and again, my zipper is too long, but that's okay. I'll cut it off after I sew the side to it. You're going to take a side piece and line up the short end to the back piece, right sides together. The second side piece will attach at the other end of the back piece. Now, I move the zipper pull out of the way, but these two sides, these two parts of the back, they're going to need to be touching when you sew this side on. The front piece will be attached to the side pieces. You're making one loop with all the side pieces, sewing the short ends together with a half inch seam allowance. Be sure no pieces are twisted before you sew it all together. After the sides are all sewn, trim the zipper if it's too long like mine is. I've sewn across the teeth um, a couple of times 
so I know it's nice and secure. Open up the zipper halfway before attaching the top and the bottom to the sides. Well, let's start with the top. Place one seam of the side, any one of those corner seams, to one corner of the top. Line up the raw edges and place a few pins in as you go. Each corner of the top should line up with a side seam. Check that both seam allowances of the piping are lined flat as you pin. Go back to the machine and again with that zipper foot, sew the top to the sides right up along the cord of the piping there. You can feel that cord, you're going to sew right up against it. After the sides are all sewn onto the top, you want to check the corners. And it's easy to not be snug up against the cord when turning the corner, so you want to check that you got it. This one, you can see that I need to go back and sew it a little closer to the cord, and I'll do that before I sew the bottom on. This is the corner where the piping starts and ends. I just wanted to show you how that looked. After the corners look good, you're going to sew the bottom to the sides as you did the top the same way. This time I have no piping, so I'm going to sew with a half inch seam allowance and it's going to be a lot easier. When you sew the bottom on, make sure you have the zipper partially open, very important, if not all the way, because once it's sewn together, you're going to reach in and pull the cover right side out. Have your zipper open at least partially. It doesn't have to be all the way open, but open enough so you can slip your hand in to pull it out. All right, it's all sewn. Now reach in and pull it right side out. Poke out the corners, unzip the zipper all the way, and put in the foam. This part doesn't look pretty, but once it's in there, voila. Of course, you want to trim any loose threads you might have. I always tend to have a bunch. All right, looks good. It's not my bed, but it does look comfy. I think it's nap time. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.